what they were talking about. And you might be a, a devout atheist or whatever. I know, I know. Devout oh, atheist, Josh, it's not even possible. But you understand my reference. But still, this is an important topic because this is being used as a manipulative tool against your fellow citizens. The government loves to play up the idea of, oh, well, you know, Romans 13, Romans 13, and a lot of pastors play along. So you have this, this citizenry that would normally be on the side of the people, on the side of freedom, who are instead saying, oh, well, I, I, I can't stand up, I can't object, I can't do anything because I'm just supposed to roll over and commit. And it turns out that modern American Christianity is misinterpreting that entire reference uh, made in Romans 13. And we're talking to Ted Wyland about that very thing. His book, Christian Duty Under Corrupt Government, you can get it. Ted, before we get back into this, can you give people a website where they can grab this book? Uh, appreciate you allowing me to do so. Uh, so it would be, the website would be Bible versus, versus spelled out, B-E-R-S-U-S, constitution.org, Bible versus constitution.org. Regrettably, this is one of, one of the books I've written that I, we do not have online. We try to provide everything we can online for people who cannot afford it. So the only place they can find this one um, is on our store page. But if they cannot, it's $7 recommended donation. If they can't afford that, then um, if they'll let me know, just contact, contact me with the contact button and they can have it for free or for whatever they can afford. Uh, I would also mention, be sure that, that they be sure to see our, our constitution survey in, in regards to uh, what little bit I said about the constitution earlier, and they will receive a free book, um, essentially the same size as uh, Christian Duty, uh, which is the primer to the, the, the big book, Bible Law versus the United States Constitution, the uh, Christian Perspective. So they'll get a free book that way as well. Um, and again, that's Bible versus B-E-R-S-U-S. Constitution.org, um, they, can, they can get either one of those books in that fashion. Perfect, thank you so much for that. Now when we left off, we were talking about the rebellion versus resistance and revolution and all that sort of thing. And you were saying resistance is, is more of an appropriate term, correct? And if so, what does resistance look like? Because I, I gotta tell you, doing this show, talking to millions of people every day, and having them talk back, there are a lot of people who are fed up with what we're facing right now, who realize this is worse than the, the British government in the 1700s. And they're looking for answers, and they're looking for, really, biblical guidance as to what am I allowed to say, do, and, and act out. Okay, well, let's, the reason I, I, wanted, I wanted to address resistance and rebellion, and that's a fine line that I'm drawing here, but it's really still working from Romans 12, 18, that we're to be a so much as it depends upon us, we're to be at peace with all men. And we've got a lot of people who are just rebellion-minded. Um, you know, Christians and non-Christians and Christians alike. And, and our perspective shouldn't be rebellion. Our, our perspective, our paradigm that we work from should be obedience to God. And if they want to consider it, rebellion when I'm obeying God, that's their business. But I don't want to come at it from a rebellion position. That's a fine line, but um, I believe there's a very passes that should be used not only in not only as it concerns the proper interpretation of Romans 13 1 through 4 in particular verses 3 and 4 in particular but um, also in companion to that proper interpretation of Romans 13 because I believe there's a Bible that tells us to not commands us to resist um, ungodly authority just, um, again not, and maybe rebellion can be but um, I'm just trying to get the paradigm here right. But it's a verse that, uh, again, I think has been misinterpreted, and I do deal with this in the commentary as well. It's 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, where it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And that says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Now, whoever this devil, roaring lion, devouring lion is, we're, there's no question, we're told to resist it. Um, but I think that we have been misled to think that this, that Peter was dealing with Satan as we normally think of Satan. Um, uh, I don't think it's the case at all. The Greek Diabolos translated, or not even really translated, uh, devil in this passage is the very same Greek word translated slanderers and false accusers in 1 Timothy 3.11. Diabolos there. The word at 
abstract look at it, they circumvented the will of the authority which this nation was founded anyway, so those, those issues are all of them. All of them are, are acted out without reverence for uh, even one person's belief system. And for goodness sake, in, in some states, if you start getting up by the tracks, you can get arrested for goodness sake. So there's, uh, most issues are, are outside of that realm of, of moral servitude or at least adherence. What does it look like to resist, though? I mean, we're not we're not advocating people take to the streets and just start randomly shooting people or anything like that, obviously. So what what, what does it look like to resist? How do we resist? Well, I think where we're at right now is best described by Mr. Baldwin for Strategies Chapter 10, which I'm flipping to as we speak here. Um, um, we're in we're at the very beginning. I believe the paradigm. We're at the very beginning of what I think is the most important paradigm shift in American history, except for perhaps what took place in the 1600s when the Puritans came and set up governments up by and for God based upon His laws. Um, I think this one's even more important because we have because this one is not just a building upon the laws of God. We're tearing down to the best of our ability the opposing. Um, yeah. Laws, are we about to break here? We are, yeah. I was, was going to say that. You heard the music too. So we'll we'll get that right after this break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Cool. Accessories. 
But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red products on sale now button. You can always call toll free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. government now before the break so you were going to look up a verse i believe in peter or something and did you find that and then can you bring that to us yeah actually i said first corinthians chapter 10 it's actually second oh, corinthians go, yeah. chapter 10 and verses four through six and i was i was beginning to say that i believe uh josh that we're at the beginning of a of the most important paradigm shift in american history and that we're not only Uh, um, to 